Is it just me saying, hey, I'm pissed? Anger tells us something could be better. It comes from a place of caring. There's this calmness about anger when it's clean. If you can listen for anger as a contributor and a connector, that's fantastic. Passive aggressive is, I'm afraid to be clean with my anger. So what do we do about this? Monique, welcome back to The Vibrant Couple. You are a regular guest here. Any one of you that have not seen the series that Monique and I do on relationship tools, here is the link. I highly recommend it. So Monique, today you are an expert on anger and more importantly in learning to share one's anger in a way that is hearable by a partner in a way that is constructive. Please say more. Absolutely. So um, we call it cleaning your anger so that the anger that you share is more effective. And I basically suggest five steps. One is know how you're feeling and what feelings tell us. Two is locating yourself. Am I full of toxicity below the line or am I coming from this clean place above the line? Three is you own your projections and figure out what fear is doing in the mix um, when you are toxic or below the line. And four is really get clear about what you want and making sure that's within your control. And the fifth step is when we actually communicate and we communicate our anger cleanly by staying present and having clear boundaries. I would love to dive in deeper in each of the steps. So step one, is it just me saying, hey, I'm pissed? <laughs> Almost. So step one for most of us is knowing what we're feeling in the first place. So most of us, but not everyone, will feel anger more in their head, down their spine, and across their shoulders. Sadness and fear are more in your belly and heart. Not for everybody. But so first you like, oh, that, that thing, that's anger or that's sadness, that's fear. So first, know what you're feeling and then what feelings tell us. They're not just random sensations. So fear tells us something wants to be known. Psst, listen to your knowing. Sadness invites us to let something go, an idea, a person, a situation. And anger tells us something could be better. What a great investment. Something could be better. I love that you're inviting us to explore with the assumption that anger is or can be constructive. How about someone who is in front of a rageful person who is basically throwing a tantrum? Yeah, I agree. If you're not in a safe situation, remove yourself from that situation. This is more about if it's just sloppy anger, it feels like I could be more effective with it, how do I handle that? So number one is getting the message out there, kind of regardless of how you do it, as long as you're not being abusive, is better than trying to hold it in and get it right. So, you know, we just really want these emotions to be expressed. And you can just say, I'm really pissed right now. This is going to come out with a lot of toxicity. And it's okay to do that. What the invitation here to do is to realize that anger is investment, anger is caring, anger is I want something to be better. And so if you can listen for anger as a contributor and a connector, that's fantastic. The other thing is most of us listening here are going to be associating anger with the big messy thing. And Mark Brackett, a leading emotions researcher, tells us that we've actually mislabeled that. This big messy thing is anger, which is authoritative and in some ways actually fairly calm, with fear of, oh no, now what do I do with this authority that I'm feeling, this, this thing I know could be better. And that's when we puff up and get big. So what I'm hearing is someone in a rage of anger is actually more scared, more anxious than anger. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, and you don't want to tell them that while they're raging. Don't tell them, yeah. oh, you're just scared. They'll get even bigger. <laughs> Wonderful. So thank you for saying that because that's really helpful for all the one of us uh, that somehow have a more passive-aggressive upbringing. Mm -hmm. Yes, and passive-aggressive is I'm afraid to be clean with my anger. I don't know how to be clean with my anger, so I'm going to get my pot shots in, whether it's through mean statements or jokes. So somebody who's not being direct and clear is going to be passive-aggressive or joking to release the anger because they're too scared to do it directly or don't know how.
Please say more on that toxicity below and above the belt. I love it. Yes, yes. So um, in uh, my industry, we often talk about above and below the line, which you would say like you're below the line, so you shoot below the belt or you hit below the belt. And you describe this really astutely as toxicity. So when I'm below the line, I'm resisting what is, and I say it shouldn't be this way or I shouldn't be this way, and I'm resenting what is. And so then I get revenge on you or myself. Um, and this whole thing is this you know, spiral downward into this pit. The thing is, is there's a lot of great learning there. So it's not about not being below the line. It's about what are the projections I have? What am I afraid of? By, by being down there, that's a part, the second step of cleaning your anger is what all is in this mess when I'm below the line and full of toxicity. So in a couple, if one of the partners tells the other, you know, I'm really pissed right now, I believe you don't care, there is an interpretation, there is a projection there that the other person is not caring. Yes, you're probably scaring yourself that I don't care. You're projecting that onto me. And there's probably part of you that's like, I don't even know if I want to care. Do exploring these projections help getting above the line or does it help having a conversation in which we can say hey right now i don't know if i can be above the line but there is something i need to discuss with you I'm going to say yes to both. So when we are below the line, when we make those messes and say those things, um, and there's this great conscious leadership group video that I think you're putting in the chat or the comments, um, when we are below the line, we get to learn. And if you listen to me knowing I'm just full of drama and saying this stuff, uh, and you don't take it personally, you and I both learn a lot about me, my stories, my fears, and my experiences. That helps us to the other part of your question, get above the line. So it's, it's really a two-parter. Being below the line helps us learn about ourselves and each other so that we can go back above the line where we have gone through the process of cleaning our anger. So basically, I'm really pissed with you right now. Mm -hmm. um, there is something I really need that you are not giving me. And I believe that having a conversation will help us turn to each other and help you somehow find ways to nurture me in a way that will be good for our couple. Yes, yeah, so uh, there's lots we could unpack with that example. But again, it's more important to express yourself even poorly than to not express yourself at all. What can happen is that you could ask yourself a series of three questions. Uh, say, for example, you and I are uh, in a living room and you're having a fight with, uh, in this role play, uh, our shared son. So I might feel anger. Your relationship with our son could feel better, could be better. But the invitation might be for me to ask myself, does this need to be said at all by me and now? So I might realize, oh, let Valdo and this role play son that we're imagining do what they're doing. I'll stay here in my anger, learn what's going on for me, but stay in my lane. So sometimes what we're doing is we're doing stuff that's just really kind of not our business, or at least not by me, not now. Well, this is very interesting because the example you gave is something that triggered something in me personally mm -hmm. and culturally. As men, we believe that our wives intervene way too much in our relationship with our children. So it's very interesting to feel the anger show up and feel all the assumptions I'm making and all somehow the stories that were somehow attached to my anger in the moment. Yes, and I would suggest that your anger is saying, this could be better. Culturally, this could be better. So what do we do about this? That's a great question. That leads us to step four, which is getting really clear about what you want. And then that has its own series of questions. So what do I want for me that's within my control? And that can be tough. So here, you're having an argument, for example, with our son in this imaginary role play. And I might be over here angering myself because I want your relationship to be better. But that's not about me. In my lane, what I want for me 
is ease in our home. What I want for me is uh, a feeling of openness and connection. What's within my control is in being somebody who brings ease into our home, who models openness, who, who, can, who can clean my anger. That's in my lane. That's what I want. It doesn't mean we don't make requests. So if I were to drift toward your lane, I might say, hey, I want to communicate, which is step five, cleanly. And I'm noticing that as you and our son are fighting, I'm upsetting myself over here. I just know it could be better. So what I'm realizing is for me to be effective, I might sometimes remove myself from the room so that you two can work through what you're working through because it's safe. You're just having a messy communication. And I'm going to go do what I need to do to be able to come back into the room and bring the peace and the ease and the joy that might help the two of you, but doing it on what's in control of me. I noticed that the way you were presenting your anger made it much easier to hear you without, uh, you know, feeling defensive when I feeling judged. And so please share more on that ease of being heard. Yeah, the whole motivation for cleaning my anger is to be more effective with this really beautiful emotion. So, for example, if you were uh, doing something that's not good for your body, I, I, can, I can notice anger in me and notice the fear that you might die early or hurt yourself. And then if I've gone through that, I can come back and say, hey, Valdo, I'm noticing that I'm feeling angry that you're not taking care of your body. And what's true for me is I'd like to enjoy your friendship or our relationship as long as possible. So I'm wondering if there's a way that we could find something that, that helps us, me, get what I want, which is more Valdo, and you potentially get what you want, maybe which is more safety or more longevity. It comes from a place of caring. I find it interesting what I heard and because I work with a lot of couples and I know a lot of men who somehow are constantly worried that their wife is trying to manipulate them there was a little bit of me that was somehow reactive and saying okay this is slightly improved but only slightly because manipulation is coming next and so would you mind uh, talking about that a little bit Yes, and if we if we did this uh, interview in pieces, we could drill down and slow down in each of this because you're right. You can weaponize and misinterpret or misuse any of these things. So I brought a classic example of I don't like what you're doing, right? That happens in every couple. And the what I did to keep it clean anger is I noticed what is it about me? What could be better? Oh, I could have this partner who will live longer and be healthier. I kept it on me. I would love this for me. Instead of saying, you need to do this, you're going to. And so, so there, there's this calmness about anger when it's clean that just says, like, I really care. I'm really invested. And this is what I'm making up happening over here. That allows you to open up and say, do I agree? Do I disagree? I, I hear the caring. And it might just be her own garbage that she's projecting on me. And, and so we have a place to communicate that if it's done cleanly is not manipulative because I'm not resisting what is, I'm just talking about what is. What I realized hearing you is that most often we get so attached to what we want others <laughs> to basically do or change that we don't take the time to focus on how we feel, which, you know, in the example we just had was anger and fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so taking the time to basically just relax into that feeling, uh, I feel that uh, is very calming. Yes, and ask yourself the three questions. What do I want for me that's within my control? 
That will bring you to a place where you're ready to communicate cleanly. That's step five, staying present. What do I want for me that's within my control? And then there would often be a clear boundary. If this is a really something that I'm noticing I can't be well, say you raise your voice and you slam your hands on the table. And maybe that activates a, an abusive childhood in me. I might say, Valdo, when your voice gets to be this high, and I either model it or I point to it so that it's as clear and clean as possible, then I am going to say time out and go for a walk or invite you to take a breath. Um, but mostly what I'm doing is I'm suggesting what I'm going to do differently when you do a behavior that doesn't work well for me. The emphasis, the focus is on me and what I want that's within my control. Not about changing whether or not you yell, but about changing what I'm going to do if you do yell. Monique, this makes me think about the interview I did recently with Darren Callius. Here is the link if anyone interested, in which he shared that with his current partner, one thing he did differently when they met is that he said, hey, darling, this is my operation system. And basically um, telling her about his reactivity and basically what to do about it and maybe what not to do. So it seems that what you are inviting here is the same thing, is for two couples to know how they become reactive, what to do about it. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, and in that video, there's this great example of him taking a photo of his sleeping partner, and he's full of love, but the flash awakens her, and she feels anger. Her body says this could be better. She is reactive briefly, brings herself back, cleans her anger, and then shares with Darren, I actually know that you come from a loving place, and even if I don't understand the logic of what you did, I understand that who you are means that you weren't doing something villainous. So she sort of gives this example through Darren's interview of cleaning her anger. And they do have these manuals, essentially, that they've given each other. This is what I'm like when I'm reactive, when I'm below the line. And then you learn from those manuals, this is what I do that's effective for my partner when they're below the line. That's an incredible skill set for a couple to have, and you'll get a lot of mileage out of that practice. Monique, I loved our conversation. I would love to summarize what I've learned so you can tell me if there is anything I missed. Okay. First is to express how one feels in the moment so that our partner knows. The second is to clean up our anger, whatever it takes. It may be going for a walk for 20 minutes or saying, hey, my anger is not clean and I would love to discuss this with you. Third is to somehow emphasize feelings because this is feelings that somehow connects us, calm us down, reconnect us. And then fourth, do not move with any request before that connection, that sense of togetherness has been established. Those are all great guidelines, yes. So uh, expressing yourself in the moment, taking time to cool down. So you might say, I'm very angry, I need to cool down. So even expressing can be short. Um, and uh, making requests when you have connection will make your requests much cleaner, much more effective, and clarification more easy to do. So it sounds like you got some great nuggets to take forward. Thank you. If this conversation I just had with Monique inspired you to learn to clean up your anger, please hit the like button below and subscribe so you can be notified when I publish new juicy content. And please share with everyone you believe would benefit. I look forward to seeing you very soon.